This is an exciting milestone for us. We've completely overhauled our CPU testing methodology for 2019, and this is what we'll be using for the rest of the year. New testing includes more games than before, tested at two resolutions, alongside workstation benchmarks. These are new for us. We've added a couple of workstation workloads that we hadn't looked at before, like program compile. We've added Adobe Premiere, Adobe Photoshop, compression and decompression, V-Ray, and more. Today is the unveiling of the workstation half of our new testing methodology, with the games getting unveiled separately. We're starting with a small list of popular CPUs, and we'll add more as we go. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Gigabyte Aorus AD27QD Gaming Monitor. The AD27QD is a 27-inch 1440p gaming display with 95% of DCI-P3 color saturation for high color accuracy, accompanied by a 1 millisecond response time, 10-bit IPS panel, and Display HDR Visa certification. Additional features include fluid adjustment and slide, RGB LEDs for personal flair, and firmware features like cooldown counters, reticles, and adaptive noise reduction. Learn more at the link below. So this is just a preview of something we've been working on for a couple of months now, just building out the tests, validating them, making sure we're happy with how the performance looks, and happy with the different aspects of the CPU that the tests represent. Typically, we do a couple of games and then we do maybe one or two workstation benchmarks, like Blender, for example, software that we actually use and is used widely for 3D animation, 3D rendering, and 3D art. So that's been our staple workstation benchmark, but there's a lot more to workstation performance than Blender, which is primarily representative of the high thread count CPUs and doesn't really look at other aspects of the processor. This set of charts is not 100% complete yet, so it's, it's an unveil of the new methodology. We'll have more information in the article in the description below. If you want to read the full testing methods, we'll describe them there. And what we're going through today is the workstation stuff. So that'll be Blender, the GNU compiler comp uh, collection for those of you who've wanted programming or com compiling benchmarks from us. We now have a GCC for that. We have V-Ray, we have Adobe Premiere, Adobe Photoshop, and then 7-Zip for compression and decompression. For games going forward, not in this video, but in a future one coming up soon, we have Hitman 2, which is new for us. We have Assassin's Creed Origins, one of our staples from previously. GTA 5, Total War Warhammer 2, the battle mode, Total War Warhammer 2 campaign mode, Civilization 6, tested just at one resolution because it's a turn time benchmark. Uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and then F1 2018, which leaves us with uh, 15 total test combinations for just games alone, because it's 1080p, 1440p across all those games, uh, and then Civ 6, Civ 6 is just 1080p. So that's our new benchmark suite. It is very comprehensive. We're uh, pretty happy with the amount of data we end up with, but we think that it's still an actually usable amount. It's not overwhelming, and it doesn't just become a, a huge mess of charts. But what we're going to have to do is kind of split them, because otherwise it will be a huge mess of charts. So workstation is what we're looking at today. We don't have the HEDT Intel CPUs benchmarked or rebenchmarked yet. You can still look at our old tests, like the 3175X, to see how some of those did. But today we're starting with popular CPUs, and then we also threw in Threadripper just because we had one around for other testing. So uh, let's get into it. We'll look at workstation results. You can check the article below for more information, and then we'll talk conclusions after all the benchmarks. We had a lot of requests to add compiler benchmarks to our test suite, so we finally did. For this, we've added the GCC benchmark, which involves compiling the GNU compiler collection version 8.2.0 with GCC version 7.4.0. We set a flag to allow it to spawn as many threads as possible, so the compilation process involves both some single-threaded and heavily multi-threaded workloads. Interestingly, the results for this test are the inverse of many of the gaming tests that we'll publish next, with all of the AMD chips on the top and all the Intel chips at the bottom. The 2990WX with Core Prio enabled logged the fastest time and an 11% time reduction versus the stock 2990WX. The AMD chips below this are ordered predictably. The 4.2 GHz 16 thread 2700 is at top, allowing the 2990WX a time reduction of about half, with the R5 2600 at 4.2 GHz following the 2700 next. This stack shows that frequency still matters as it outpaces the 2700X stock CPU marginally. The R7 2700X's 8.7 minute compile time leads the 9900K stock CPU by 22%, a meaningful improvement overall. The 9900K leads the Intel CPUs, and again, the order is predictable. 
other than the AMD Intel divide. The CPUs are logically ordered by the highest frequency and core count parts, with the stock 8600K at the very bottom. Frequency and core count are important factors, but they aren't everything, and this is one real-world workload that shows it. Cache, for instance, can also come into play in this type of benchmark. Note that other compilers may behave differently, and also that linking is a factor worthy of consideration. If using linkers that are typically single-threaded, this can pose a bottleneck. We are also doing all of our testing in Windows, and so Linux workloads would further exhibit deviation from what we're seeing here. 7-Zip is next. 7-Zip includes a built-in benchmark that can generate scores for both compression and decompression, measured in millions of instructions per second. Interestingly, decompression appears to be more thread-dependent than compression, the 9900K leads in compression by a good margin, with 21.4% more instructions per second than the 9700K when both are overclocked. This shows that threads still do affect the score, even though this chart lines up differently than the decompression chart we'll look at next. The worst performer in this category is the stock i5-8600K, with only 6 cores and 6 threads, but the 32-core 64-thread 2990WX only lands in the middle of the chart. We seem to be constrained, to some extent, by single-threaded performance. In decompression, however, Threadripper tears ahead of everything else, with 115% more instructions per second than the overclocked 9900K. The stock AMD R7-2700X and overclocked R7-2700 actually managed to beat out the stock 9900K, although overclocking to 5.2 GHz does allow it to regain the lead at the expense of power. The 2700 outperforms the overclocked 9700K at 5.1 GHz when the 2700 is stock, illustrating a limitation in the i7's thread count as the R7 gains a 5% lead. Even the R5 2600 at 4.2 GHz nearly keeps up with the 9700K. We're next using Puget Systems' Photoshop Benchmark. It recommends 32GB of system memory, which is the main reason we now use four 8GB sticks of RAM for all of our tests rather than just four CPUs that can run memory in quad channel. We run the extended version of this benchmark, which produces seven scores as well as an overall score to summarize them. Thread count isn't much help here, and the 5.2 GHz 9900K tops the chart once again. The chart is roughly ordered by CPU frequency, with the 2990WX scoring slightly worse than the stock R5-2600, even with game mode or core prio. The ordering by frequency is further illustrated by the 8600K at 5 GHz, outperforming a stock 8700K, or the 9700K at 5.1 GHz, outperforming the stock 9900K. Photoshop appears to be frequency bound in these tests, which includes the application of various filters, transforms, resizes, photo merges, and more. And if you're curious about the Intel HEDT CPUs, we first started using this benchmark back in the 7900 era, including most recently with the 3175X. Blender benchmarking has also changed with this round of GN's updated test methodology. We're keeping our in-house made benchmark scenes using realistic workloads with things like ray tracing and movie-ready render settings, also realistic effects, but we've eliminated Blender 2.78. 2.78 has grown long in the tooth, so we've struck out that monkey head render test, and the temperamental 2.79 splash render as well has been removed, leaving only the Blender 2.79 monkey head render and the GN logo renders. The monkey heads produce a varied workload on the CPU exclusively by using different types of textures, transparencies, and elements within the scene, while the GN logo hammers the CPU more explicitly with ray tracing and very, very high sample count for the final render. It's typically the test that causes unstable overclocks to reveal themselves as unstable. Blender is an important test to us because we actually use it, and it directly benefits us to know which CPUs handle it best. Let's start with the monkey head render. The 2990WX takes this test handily with its 64 threads, and the rest of the stack lines up in a similar fashion to the other thread-bound workloads, with the 9700K being the only CPU breaking the more cores, higher score pattern. The 2990WX finished testing in 10.9 minutes stock, roughly the same with Core Prio, and demonstrates clear value to professionals who work in tile-based rendering applications like Blender and Cycles. The biggest value add is when high system memory requirements exist, as this can rapidly exit the confines of GPU memory allotment, thus limiting usefulness of CUDA rendering. We still need to retest our HEDT Intel CPUs, so Threadripper remains relatively isolated for now. The 9900K at stock completes its render in 20.6 minutes, 
a time reduction of 11% from the stock R7-2700X's 23-minute render time. The 2700X comes close, given the price difference, and that's because Blender tends to favor thread count since it spawns one tile per thread. For the GN logo render, the TR-2990WX obviously still leads, and will wait until further updates to the chart before it has any company. The 9900K stock CPU roughly equates an overclocked 2700 at 4.2GHz, although outperforms the stock 2700X with a 6% render time reduction. The stock 2700 and stock 9700K also end up roughly tied, with the 8700K approaching both of these CPUs in performance. Premiere is a test that we've done in the past, but we haven't kept up with it faithfully due to the amount of manual setup required. This is something that we've resolved going forward. Our last Adobe Premiere test was with our old test methodology, where we showed the Intel 28-core 3175X proving genuinely good when overclocked. It drew a hell of a lot of power, but it also managed the fastest render times, even outperforming the 9980XE and the high-speed 9900K. We haven't retested with our new test suite just yet, but we do have more mainstream CPUs tested for today. We've streamlined this process, and now we're rendering three videos. One at 1080p60, it's a convention show floor report, one at 4K60 with A-roll and B-roll, and one 4K video consisting entirely of charts. H.264 is our codec for these for now, with a high profile and 35 megabit per second output. Starting with the 1080p60 A-roll and B-roll footage from a convention, where we used clips entirely off of our Panasonic UX180 and recorded through our Zoom audio devices, we get the chart on the screen now. We haven't yet put the HEDT CPUs through this one, so the 9900K's 3.9 minute render is at the top. Render time is reduced by nearly 8% with an overclock to 5.1 GHz. The 9700K at 5.1 GHz shows that, despite being frequency locked with our chart topping 9900K, the extra threads are actually beginning to help more as Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2019 gets updates. The 9900K at 5.1 GHz holds a lead of 15% over the 9700K, advantaged by its double thread count. AMD's R7-2700 at 4.2 GHz and the 2700X finish the render in about 4.4 to 4.55 minutes, landing roughly equal to the stock 9700K. Despite increasing thread utilization, Premiere still likes higher frequencies. This much is proven by comparing the 2700 stock result of 5.2 minutes to the OC result, where we see a reduction of 13% versus baseline. The R5 2600 at 4.2 GHz does exceptionally well when considering its more budget-oriented positioning, although professionals who use Premiere every single day would still want to consider a higher-end option toward the top of the chart, or something we haven't yet tested. Our 4K 60 A-roll and B-roll render was more intensive, clearly, as it's dealing with a higher quality output and more pixels. The 9900K OC finishes this render in 10.8 minutes, which is a render time reduction of 10% from baseline. The stack is almost exactly the same for these tests, except the 2700 stock and the 8700K reshuffle, but they're within error margins of each other in both tests. The difference between the 2700X and a 9900K both stock is that the 9900K finishes its render in 13% less time. The chart render in particular seems to be a lighter workload on the CPU, and we'll be scrapping it moving forward. This is an illustration of a workload that isn't as heavily reliant upon the CPU, and we see CUDA kicking in to help more frequently with our chart renders. That'd be what you're seeing on the screen now. It's, it's a chart render, because that's, well, that's the idea of what we're doing for the 4K60 chart render test. It's a lot of this. But anyway, because of how scattered these results are, especially with how unreliable the differences are and how some of these just straight up don't make a lot of sense, we have to scrap it going forward because the test data is not reliable and because we're exiting CPU bound scenarios and entering scenarios where other parts of the system are taking more control. Chaos Group's V-Ray benchmark includes a GPU and a CPU test, but we use the CPU test only for this benchmark. It takes between one and two minutes to complete on most of our CPUs and the results align closely with something like Cinebench or Blender for rendering benchmarks with the higher thread count CPUs like the 2990WX and the 9900K heavily advantaged, leaving the stock 8600K in dead last. Until we retest our HEDT Intel CPUs, the 9900K at 5.2 GHz is Intel's highest result on our chart. This one completes the workload in 0.95 minutes, allowing the 2990WX a time reduction of about 52%, demonstrating that V-Ray actually leverages 
the threads available to it. Although the 9900K does well to keep up with an HEDT part, extra threads do win out in this test ultimately. The 2700 at 4.2GHz outperforms the overclocked 9700K, demonstrating again that there's a thread advantage, but it's barely beaten by the 9900K stock CPU. Price is a factor, granted, and the 2700 comes in about $265 cheaper. The R5 2600, just for reference, at 4.2GHz, lands at 1.53 minutes time completion, putting it within range of the 8700K stock CPU. So that's it for our new workstation tests. We technically also have Cinebench just for internal validation. We, we don't really publish those numbers because we have Blender for an actual workload for that, but we still take it just to make sure the CPUs are where they should be for internal validation of performance. We have TimeSpy that we didn't show in this video, perhaps in the future though. And then the really interesting stuff is GCC, V-Ray, stuff like that. If you have specific requests of things that you would still like to see, leave them below. There's no guarantee we'll add them into this test suite, but we do actively take suggestions. Uh, these tests were advanced because of suggestions from our audience. So if you want to be considered, even if it's in six months from now, for additional testing, leave your idea below and maybe a, a brief reason of why you would like to see that, even if it's just, look, I'm a professional in this space and we use this application, we'll certainly consider it. So there's obviously a lot more that could be done but this is the most comprehensive suite we've ever had for CPU testing, and uh, we are greatly looking forward to continuing to use this suite, advancing it, and figuring out what new things it teaches us about processor performance. So for now, you get a recap of the 9900K, of the 2700 Series X and non-X, the overclock performance for some of those, and Thread represent a couple of those charts as well, and then we'll, uh, we'll continue advancing as Ryzen 3000 series comes out, and up until then. So let us know what you think of the suite. It's fairly comprehensive, but again, open to suggestions. Subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to support us directly for this type of multi-month effort. And you can pick up something like, for example, our GN Teardown Cubes, which have a 3D laser engraved logo, GN logo, with things like MOSFETs, capacitors, inductors, and fake VRMs. Probably can't turn that into a real one, but you can try. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.